What's going on? What, what are you all doing here so late at night? Oh, it's not really late. We all wanted to be here, April. April, there's something you have to know. There was an accident tonight. Train accident. Train? Draper's train. There was a flood upstate, and it uh, did some damage to a bridge. No, I, I, I don't want to hear anymore. Don't say anymore. You have to. I Robert. don't have to. I know what you're going to say. You're going to tell me that Draper's dead. You're going to tell me that my husband's dead. Oh, my God, you're not even trying to deny it. It's true. It is true, April. We just thought you'd better hear it from us. It's going to be all over the news by morning. Darling, I realize that nothing we might say can be of much comfort to you, but I, I think that we feel the loss almost as much as you. We all loved him, April. This is horrible, but, you know, we'll be with you and try to, try to share everything we can. I haven't lost him for 15 years. I've lost him forever. Come on, Red. Look, you have to stop talking like this. It is not your fault that this train went and had itself an accident. Calvin, it was our fault that Draper was on the train. It's no use blaming circumstances or anything else. We were the arresting officers. We were the one who came up with the facts against him. Deborah, the facts were already there. We just put them down on paper. The facts were wrong, Steve. They were all wrong. Look, we know that. Now. Look, who finally came up with the right facts, huh? Yeah, but it was too late. It's too late. Draper's already dead. Deborah, Draper was on a train going to serve a prison sentence. Now, there was a horrible accident. It wasn't our fault. Look, there were a lot of other people who were killed on that train who, who were never wrongly convicted of murder. You just can't put the two things together, right? I know. I keep trying to tell myself the same thing. It's like some cruel trick of fate or something. It doesn't help. It just doesn't. God, I wish we could have come up with a truth about him before. Deborah, there are a lot of things in life we would change if we could. This just happens to be something that we can't change. Look, we were not the only ones who were wrongly convinced that Draper was the only one who could have killed his mother-in-law. I mean, he, he was the only one there, or we thought he was the only one there. That's right. And uh, we weren't the only ones who had evidence against Draper. It was that doctor, the doctor that was with Margaret at the All hospital. Right. Now, what, what's his name? Uh, Dr. Corwin. Corwin. Right. Yeah, that's true. He's... He said he heard Margot accuse Draper. Why? I mean, why would she do it? Out of spite? It's a terrible thing to do on your deathbed. Oh, God, it's a heck of a thing to leave somebody with. You know, I just remembered something. What? The testimony the doctor gave, he said that April tried to get Margot to say that Draper was innocent. So? Well, suppose Margot wasn't answering that question. I mean, suppose she never even heard that question. <laughs> well, what, what was she saying then? Maybe she, she was trying to say the name of the person who was really guilty, only she just couldn't get it out. She said no. Of course. Maybe she was trying to say no. Nola. Calvin, that's wonderful. Ah, why didn't we think of that before? Yes, why didn't we? Hey, I just realized something. We've got Nola booked, but we haven't been able to get in touch with Chief Mallory yet. Why don't we give him another try? 
I think the pleasure should be yours. Yes, Governor, and thank you very much for your cooperation. Well, surely you must know the people of this city are deeply distressed about what happened at Grand Falls and will do anything, anything at all that's possible to help. Thank you, Governor. Goodbye. Well, what is this, Greg? Latest count on the casualties. The death toll has reached 14. And a half a dozen people who are listed as missing. Maybe more than that. The current up there was pretty rough, Mrs. Saxon. I know. I know. Hello. Geraldine. You remember Chief Mallory, of, yeah, course, of course. course. Mrs. Saxon, how are you? I came down here because Logan suggested I might learn more about the accident of a Great Falls right here than I would in my own tactical command room. We keep getting bulletins every few minutes. Another name added to the casualty list. Another grim detail of death and suffering. It's been quite an evening for you. Hell of an introduction to the TV news game. Somebody called it a baptism of fire, and they were quite right. Especially the news about Draper Scott. You and he were very close at one time. Yeah. There was such a time. <clears throat> yes, well, I, uh, I don't know what you've heard so far, Chief, but surely this is the worst train disaster in the history of this state. And it's the first major accident on the Graham County Express. Up to now, they've had a 40-year safety record. As I understand it, they haven't even recovered many of the bodies yet. It's going to be some time before we know the full extent of this disaster. Well, it couldn't get much worse for some people, could it? Just the loss of Draper Scott alone. And, of course, the deputy who was with him. Was Dwyer married? He was widowed, but he has a son somewhere. You know, the first few hours, I couldn't help wishing, hoping, and praying that there was some mistake, that somehow a correction would come over the wire about Draper. We heard that the bodies were pretty badly burned, so I guess identification hasn't been easy. Now, there were three surefire pieces of identification, all of them metal. Dwyer's badge, his service revolver, and the handcuffs. Chief Mallory, you have a telephone call. Oh, thank you. Use the phone over there. Okay. They tracked you down, didn't they? Oh, I'm easy to find. I always leave word where I'll be. Hello. Chief, hi, it's Deborah Saxon. Hello, uh, Deborah, what's up? Uh, we have some uh, information to give to you. Uh, it concerns the Margot Dorn case. Uh, we have a confession. You have a what? We have a full confession from Nola Madison, Chief. Margot Dorn's killer. We booked her about an hour ago, and we would have called you sooner, but then we heard about the train wreck at Grand Falls. Where are you? I'm, I'm at home. We, we're all here. The three musketeers. We're uh, kind of conducting a private wake here. If you would like to come, you're welcome. Yes. Yes, I'm, I'm going to be right over. April, there's something we, we really ought to talk about. Difficult as it is to talk about anything at a time like this. You know, I, I, I told you that uh, I saw Dr. Buckley earlier this evening, and she said it'd be okay for you to leave the hospital anytime you wanted. And, and we both agreed that when you did leave the hospital, you'd come stay with the two of us. We don't want you to be alone. I am alone. I mean, I'll, I'll always be alone. Thing is, I, I, I knew this was going to happen when Draper left here this morning. No, you're not really alone. You have family and you have friends. I don't People have love you. Draper. Gonna... You have yourself and you have Julia. Now look, the only reason I brought this up is because, frankly, I think you'd be better off out of the hospital. I think it makes more sense for you to be home, to be with other people. Miles, I'm not so sure I want to be with other people. I mean, I'm not so sure other people want to be with me. It's not true. We want you. Nancy and Mike want you, too, for that matter. Oh, I forgot to tell you about that. You got a choice of two offers. Mike and Nancy thought you might, might want to stay at their place, at least until Julia's big enough to get out of the hospital. They're both working people, no children in the house, and 
You have the whole place to yourself. Oh, it's terribly sweet of him, but you belong with us, I April, please. I don't want to think about it now, please. Yeah, of course, right? Miles, we shouldn't be talking about these things now. Okay, okay. Now, well, they're not going to kick you out of here, of course. There's just no need for you to stay here. When you get a chance, just think about it. Look, I, I, I really, I really don't want to think about it now. I don't want to think about anything. I just really want to shut my eyes and shut out the whole world. Or whatever's left of it. Oh, Mike, I feel so helpless. See the look on April's face when she heard the news? Oh, yes. I wonder if there's uh, any more news about the train wreck. I'll try the radio. A state of emergency in the northern part of the state caused by the heavy rains and flooding which had plagued the area for the past week. Some 2,000 families are homeless as a result of the storms, and many thousands more have been without electric power for the past 24 hours. Governor Jennings has stated that he intends to ask for federal funds to provide relief for the communities affected. And so far, the damage is estimated in the millions. Of course, the greatest tragedy precipitated by the weather was the derailment near the Grand Falls Bridge, which resulted in the worst train disaster in the history of the state. A wreck which has already cost an estimated 14 to 20 lives, with injuries running into the hundreds. Among the known victims of the crash are Draper Scott, defendant in the recent Margot Dorn homicide case, and Sergeant Samuel Dwyer, the deputy assigned to escort him in handcuffs to begin his 15-year sentence at Redstone Penitentiary. Those handcuffs were still locked onto the bodies of Scott and his police escort tonight, as they lay in the makeshift morgue in Grand Falls, along with the rest of the dead retrieved from the smoldering wreckage. Witnesses reported several explosions on the train, and the blaze which encompassed the train was only extinguished by the raging river waters, which have claimed more than a half dozen of the victims. Their identities are still not known. Uh, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, this just in from Monticello. Larry, are you sure about... Uh, yes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I was just confirming a bulletin, and here is a late report from the Monticello Police Department. It's still not confirmed, but we have it on good authority that another arrest was made this evening in connection with the Margot Dorn homicide. Mike. Yes, it has been confirmed. Nola Madison, also known as Nola Patterson, the movie star, who moved to Monticello some six months ago, and completed the first feature film made here, has been arrested for the murder of Margot Huntington Dorn. According to our information, Mrs. Madison has made a full confession to the crime, exonerating the convicted Draper Scott. Oh my God. Here's the latest we have on the announcement from the Monticello police concerning the arrest and confession of Nola Madison for the slaying of Margot Huntington Dorn. The arrest was made by police detectives Deborah Saxon and Steve Guthrie at the home of Nola Madison only a few hours ago. No details of the crime and how it was committed have been released, but a press conference has been promised for the morning. There was one statement issued by Chief Derek Mallory, who was reached by phone just a few minutes ago. He said, the confession is genuine and they are very gratified that the persistence of his officers finally produced the true facts in the case. He also added that he was deeply regretful that the facts did not emerge sooner in time to exonerate Draper Scott and thereby spare him the disaster which befell him on the way to prison. We'll be back with more details on this story in our next broadcast. My God, they have the killer, but it's all too late, Nancy. Nola Madison. I don't understand it. How could she have done it? It just doesn't seem possible. Well, if she confessed, we'll know how before long. 
but it is too late. I won't help Draper now. No. It won't help him now. It was the first thought I had when I saw that empty wig box, Chief. We already, already sus suspected Nola Madison, but uh, she had a suspicious alibi. Uh, there was another reason. The fact that Nola was an actress, and a very good actress. Oh, and not to forget, she was very, very good at makeup. Yeah, remember the makeup job she did as Hester Atherton? Now, wait a minute. Are you all trying to say that Nola Madison was wearing some kind of a disguise when she killed Margot Dorn? No, she killed Margot as herself. Well, then she used the disguise to make her escape, and that's why Draper didn't see her. No, it's not exactly that simple, Chief. She stole Margot Dorn's wig so that she could play the part of Margot Dorn. No, wait a minute. Run that past me again. She took Margot's wig so she could be her. You see, she killed Margot an hour before Draper even got there. That's how she was able to make her escape so easily. She just walked right out of the apartment building and probably went home. Nobody knew that Margot was dying. Because she was planning on coming back. Is that what you're getting at? Yes, that's right, Chief. And Nola knew that Draper was coming over and in a fit of anger. Right, she had just overheard a conversation in which Margot told Draper to come over in an hour. So she struck Margot with a poker, stole the wig, and went out. And then she came back wearing the wig with her fur collar pulled up to her face. But what about her voice? She's a marvelous mimic. I'm sure she had no trouble at all fooling Oscar. Unreal. And look at it from Oscar's point of view. He had just come on duty, right? Now, he had no idea if Margot was in the penthouse or not. Well, this lady enters the lobby, who looks like Margot. She goes to the elevator, the private elevator, and says something to Oscar uh, in Margot's voice. Yes, tells him that her son-in-law is expected. So easy for her. But she didn't go up to the penthouse. She went down to the basement. Right. Exactly. And her luck held out there, too, because nobody saw her. So she just stepped out of the elevator, pushed the button to the penthouse, and went on her merry way. And at the same time, Draper enters the lobby, looking, as Oscar put it, like the wrath of God. That's how Draper was able to follow behind Margot by only a minute. And of course, when he got upstairs, all he found was her body on the floor with her skull crushed. Was it any wonder that he had no idea what happened? Can you imagine how he felt? He was innocent, just like he said. We can't do a thing about it. That's what's so awful about it, Chief. If we'd come up with the answer a day earlier... But you did come up with it. All of you. That's what matters. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to Draper. It doesn't matter to April. It doesn't even matter to me. Probably just the Wiley's dog. He must be lost again. Emily, stop. It might be a prowler. Well, we'll just look, Molly. Oh, Molly, there, there is someone. There's someone lying here. It's a trick. 
Now, you just leave him there and come back in the house. I'll call the police. No, now. no, you let me go see. Oh, he's hurt. Molly, somebody has been hurt. Then we will call an ambulance. No, we, we can't just let him die out here. We've got to bring him in the house. Emily, I won't allow it. Emily, I forbid it. I will tell your father, Emily. Oh, please, you've got to help me, Molly. He's, uh, he's much too tall. I won't be able to manage by myself. Emily, I will not help you bring this tramp into our house. Oh, Molly, please. You've got to help me. We, we, well, you can't just let him die out here. Emily, this is all wrong. But it's the only thing we can do. Now, please, please help me. Molly, help me.